of the head on the tool. So you have your motor in the body straight through and then a right angle gear set down to your business end. Similar tool, biggest difference that you see here in this little right angle head instead of a collet system that you would see in this particular tool, this collet nut, you have a threaded shaft and we'll explain the difference of that in a second. On the straight tool, Similar situation, straight motor design in the body, collet on the end, straight out from the motor spindle. This tool happens to be rear exhaust, where the exhaust comes out the back end of the tool. Safety lock throttle, which you'll find typical on all the UT products. So you can't depress that until you push aside the spring-loaded lever. Fitting on the back end of the tool, this is a standard quarter inch fitting and we're using a 3 8 airline. We'll get back to the two right angle heads. Typically on a standard die grinder, which most machines will have in their, their tool chest, this is a quarter inch collet and essentially you'll see the shaft will thread into the nut, nut tightens the collet and your accessory is now locked into the unit. On this particular tool, similar situation, we're going to use an abrasive roll lock type disc setup with a backing pad, only instead of the quarter inch shaft, we're at, we actually have a threaded female opening. That opening is going to thread right on the bottom end of the spindle thread, and essentially what you've done is you've reduced the head height of that tool, so you can see the difference in the height. This is a great tool for tight quarters, getting into corners, nooks and crannies. All these tools that you see here require 90 pounds of pressure, and typically we'll use anywhere from four to six cubic feet per minute volume of air. All air motors require lubrication. So typically on an air tool, you're gonna to take the tool, take your bottle of air motor oil, and you're gonna put it in the end, and just do a couple of drops. That's enough as soon as you connect the air supply, actuate the tool, essentially you're gonna run oil through the tool and lubricate the veins and internal parts of the motor. So in addition to that, you'll have a right angle gear set that needs lubrication. And there's grease that's required to go in this head. So how do you get the grease in there? That's a little Zerg fitting. You can see it's a little spring-loaded ball bearing fitting. And essentially, you take a standard grease gun with a needle type nozzle that'll push in that ball bearing and allow you to pump grease into the head of this unit. Every tool with gears you're gonna find will have a similar type Zerk fitting and you'll also find it on other tools like impact wrenches and other grinders. This is a standard duty UT right angle die grinder, quarter inch. It's a composite overlay handle, so there's a cast housing underneath with a composite overlay, a little bit more comfortable, warm to the touch. Heavy duty, right angle, casing over the gears, and then again with a quarter inch collet. What's important to note on die grinders is speeds. This particular tool is a 20,000 RPM, and you'll find on the UT products, typically the model number and specifications for speed are right on the lever throttles, laser etched. It's important to know the speed when you're grinding or sand, sanding. Essentially, 
you want to make sure that your accessories are rated properly to the tool that you're using. If you have a 20,000 RPM tool, you want to make sure that that accessory is rated for at least 20,000, if not more. So let's, let's hook it up and uh, give this a shot. What's the difference with the two? We talked about head height, right? This is a simple quick change disc. You can see how that works. Basically just threads on to that backing pad and it's locked into place. This tool is set up to give you either front exhaust or rear exhaust and it really depends on how you orientate this little red washer. Very few tools have the option of offering both front and rear exhaust. This particular tool is set up to exhaust the air out of the back end of the tool. That's great for confined areas where the air might blow at the work and maybe springboard back to the operator and hit him in the face. If you have a wide open area like this table, if you change it so that the exhaust comes out the front, it's a good way to blow some of that debris off as long as it's not in the way of any other operators. So you can see the same function as the full size right angle. The difference between these two, again, is going to be the head height and also the quality of the actual tools. This one is actually a precision type motor built for high-end applications. This one is more of an everyday MRO type use.